you doing? This is Bad Marriage for Life, episode 20. We made it to episode 20. I'm Jenny Boom Boom, and this is Vic, my yes. fiance. Yes, 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 just Vic. Yes, episode 20, we are here. We did it. 20 <laughs> weeks of this podcast, which has been a struggling, struggle, struggle, only because, you know, and I've talked about this in the past a little bit, as much as I'm on the radio talking about my family life and everything else that goes on in my life, this has been sometimes heart-wrenching talking about our truths in this relationship and how vulnerable we are. And of course, also a lot of spectators <laughs> have watched <laughs> have watched our podcast and or just seen like the little short blips that are coming from YouTube and maybe judging, you know, some of the things that we said based upon that short blip. Yeah. And um so yeah, there's been a lot of bashing, a lot of bashing, but it's okay. I'm I've I have a thick skin, Vic has a thick skin. Yeah. We are just here for the conversations. And here being it our you know our episode twenty mm -hmm. it's a, it's a huge landmark here a monumental episode we have a sex coach with us today her yes. name is Jennifer Melville yeah so welcome oh, to the podcast thank you we actually welcome. I actually met Jennifer at a woman's brunch recently and I just thought you were absolutely amazing people were drawn to you the way that you're able to talk about sex and in such a funny way because at the end of the day sex is pretty funny right. You know, you got to laugh or cry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people, and everyone, you know, most everyone, I'm going to say, have se has sex, is, you know, whatever, it's sometime in their life, right? Most so, everyone. I'm assuming most everyone. So, I strive to. <laughs> they strive to. There's a few here and there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you're not getting lucky, you know, organically, you can pay for it. Yes. So, um, you yes. know, Jen, first of all, tell me, how did you become a certified sex coach? Yeah. So... I spent 12 years in higher education, so I literally went through like 18-year-olds peeing in dryers mm -hmm. to talking to couples about their sex life. Um, it started in two ways. So I, I did a side hustle as a sex toy consultant. Oh, oh and so like a hell of a side hustle. I like yeah. that. You know, and I came <laughs> home and my then boyfriend, now husband, I was like, so what if I sold like vibrators or dildos mm. like on the side? And even my dad was like, are you slinging the dildos now? <laughs> and so I started out there. It's just like a way to like make a little bit extra money. And I was right. like, sex sells in every way. Yeah. Yes. And so you go into people's homes, you show them like vibrators and lubes and all these right. juicy things. And then you go into a private shopping room and you mm. talk about like, what fiber do you want? Wow. And I learned very quickly because it's mostly women okay. that I was like, gosh, all then they just like verbal vomit, like all of this stuff. Like this was going on in my life, fertility, mm. infertility, you know, not ever had sex, never had an orgasm, shame, all you name it. And I was like, oh my God, mm. like, who do you talk to? Who's helping you? Right. And I was like, You're, this is a great vibrator, but this is not going to solve your problems. And so that's where it sort of started. And okay. then I realized during the pandemic and things like that, like I was, I mean, I made thousands and thousands of dollars during the pandemic. People were just home having sex. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but I realized like they need something more. And so I enrolled in a certification program. Um, so I'm not a licensed therapist. because okay. I, I want to talk about movement. I want to talk about forward progression not just like hey let's talk about our feelings let's figure out then what right no one teaches you how to move forward right and so that's how i got into it that's where it started um and mostly from that sort of environment okay um but also i realized like people in marriage and you know you guys been together for a long time mm -hmm. you know things might change when you get married or they might not mm -hmm. um but i realized being in my own relationship that i was like god like why are you in such miserable relationships mm. So it was not about sex, but yeah. it was also about like your relationship. The connection. The connection. I was, And so I'm looking at my marriage, not yeah. that it's perfect by any means, right. but I was like, gosh, I have such a loving, you know, mostly equal partner. Like, you know, I set my expectation. He said, and maybe because I was older, we were older when we got together. But mm -hmm. I was like, OK, I need to help you with your vibrators and your orgasms. But I also <laughs> need to help you. Stay connected and right. you know be in a loving relationship. So uh, yeah, I just changed my career in my late thirties, wow. pregnant with twins. <laughs> That's, a Love it. That's a beautiful story. Yeah. Man. Well, how did you find like the certification? So, like, what, how did yeah. you research that? <laughs> so, because I do have a bachelor's and a master's degree, but not in this. Right. And I was like, oh, like I could go to back to school to be a licensed therapist okay. who are very much needed. Like I right, think yes. everyone should go to therapy at some point in their lives, if yeah. not just as a standing like ground for moving forward. Mm -hmm. And, but I was like, but therapy tends to focus on like things that happened in the past, right, like yeah. in big trauma, little trauma, you know, um, high emotions, but mm -hmm. then you get to a certain point in therapy of acceptance or not, you know, um, continual progression. Right. And then that's it. There isn't like a, 
a person in most cases, especially in the sex realm, like a lot of even like sex therapists or marriage and relationship counselors, mm -hmm. they have one course gotcha. in sex education, mm -hmm. like in sexual, you know, and it, most of it has nothing to do with pleasure. It's right. all about your body parts. Mm -hmm. And and this is not a knock against them by any means. So I was like, I want to do more than that. Like I want to see people through and give them the tools and strategies to like go about their life in a pleasurable and sexual way. Gotcha. So I just started <laughs> Googling. <laughs> right. Okay. And if you like, if you read my like Google history, you can imagine right. what it looks like. But, right. and I just found a certification program. It was, it's a global program based out of California. Okay. And it just fed, fed, met my needs it for what right. I was looking for. It felt right. Like yeah. it was okay. a lot about the medical stuff, the mm. like body parts and stuff, which again, I'm still not that great at, but right. a lot about like the coaching piece. Like how can I talk you through something? Okay. Um, and really action oriented, which is what I was looking for. Gotcha. So exactly. as far as you being, you know, a certified sex coach, um, who is, who are your biggest clients? Who are, are they single women? Are they women and, you know, in couples, men? Yeah. I mean, who, who's asking for your help the most? Okay. So everyone's asking for my help. Oh. Thankfully, not okay. everyone, but once I kind of pop up into someone's world, mm -hmm. oftentimes I hear like, can we talk later? Yeah. I yeah. need to talk to you. And so, but I would say I I focused my practice on a specific group of people, and that is couples with young children. Oh, okay. Um, so toddlers to preteens, I say. And I've had some clients that have, you know, grown children. Gotcha. Um, and at that point, you know, they're at a point where they've been roommates for a long time. Right, yes. Right, yeah. um, <laughs> um, but basically me. Like okay. I, you know, I've been married for six years. I have twin four-year-olds, wow. you know, like, and I, I get what those couples are going the through. Struggle. The right. struggle. The yes. struggle of, right. you know, everything is ever changing and how do we stay connected? So that's mostly who I work with. Okay. Um, there's other coaches that do other things, you know. So what's the biggest problem that you feel you're hearing from couples? So couples come to me. Well, the problem they come to me with, right. no pun intended, is not <laughs> necessarily. Come. Come, 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 come. <laughs> <laughs> we coming all over this episode. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, hopefully that's the goal, right? Um, that they speak to me about uh -huh. <laughs> um, is often not what they end up working on, but it is typically lack of sex drive. Like, right? We, yes, that's what we have. I'm not in the mood. Right. Or lack of I sex don't want drive. to. Right. You we know, we like... don't have sex. Yeah. Me and Vicky never have sex. I don't even know the last time we had sex. Ah, it was yeah. months ago. Yeah. Right. It was months ago. Yep. And why do you say that, Jen? Like, we have a 12 year old, he goes to school right. and uh -huh. leaves the house. And our 20 year, old, 20 year old, she goes off to work and does her things. She's, she's gone. Right. The opportunity is there. And right. the opportunity is there. Right. I mean, it has to be in the morning, at night. You know, we've talked about this on the show a lot. Our house, the the way that, you know, the proximity of the bedrooms from the kids yeah. versus ours. Right. And they're old enough to know stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we just don't at, at, with the kids in the house. Yep. We just don't. Well, it's also about schedule, too. Like, I tend to get up very early. Jenny doesn't. And stuff, so, you know, and I'm kind of ready, like, to go in the morning or whatever and stuff. What if mm -hmm. she's not? Um, then he has about by five, Jen. Yes, but yeah. Oh <laughs> I've never had sex at five. <laughs> morning sex five, is the five, ten? No. Morning <laughs> sex is the best sex. It's not no, like it's that. Not. Yes, it's it gross. is because at the end of the day, okay, if you don't in the morning, you're fresh. You brush your teeth, couple of couple of swishes of scope, and you're good to go. No, I'm not right. pausing. I've been sweating all night in bed. It's a struggly struggle for me, right. obviously, to, right. to like get up and get going right away. I have to shower because I'm menopausing. I right. can't. I'm not like fresh and clean when I wake up. I'm right. like been sweating. I've been I've been literally struggling to sleep all night. Sometimes I get it. A I'm cold, tossing and turning. So a cold shower maybe in the morning might help. Sleep, so you might, need a might, shower. Might, might 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 help or whatever and stuff like that. Because so if you think about it, at the end in, at the end of the day, if we're trying to have sex in the evening or whatever and stuff, at the end of the day, you've you've gone to work and stuff, right? You've come home. Uh, you do you wait. You come home. You're dealing with the you're dealing with the children and all their needs and everything requests that they got going on the, um, the, the younger mm -hmm. children then we have the adult children who call about three to four times each or Everybody whatever stuff. yeah like that <laughs> and they all have some issue or something yes. that needs to be resolved or yes, whatever right 
Then after that, you're eating. You're eating. Um, you, you eat dinner. Yeah. Um, you you got your own personal business business that we have to take care of. We got radio station stuff you got to take care of or okay, whatever. Okay. Anything it. like that. So then next thing you know, you want to like excuses. Yeah. No. Excuses. No. I'm, I'm running. I'm running. I'm, I'm, I'm not running down excuses. I'm running down facts. History. No, here. I know. And yeah. I wish that things were simple because right. they're not. Right. But what would be a really good time for me? Okay. Because by the time like you know our our child goes off to school. Mm -hmm. You know, by then when you come back, I'll have a little coffee, you know, You're and then lying. and I'm taking a shower. <laughs> and then I'm gonna say I feel like about eleven AM before I go to work, eleven AM. Uh, yeah. I can set that time aside. Uh, you are lying right now. Like said, so, <laughs> we have tried that. All right, before. we're gonna do this. We're gonna get into it. I'm gonna give you guys a a little free session here. Um, uh, what I'm hearing. Okay. <laughs> so yes, is the lack of sex drive left like a libido time yeah. we're tired uh, this didn't happen the you just listed all of the things yeah. right yes. so what you're striving for mm -hmm. is the perfect condition like you we actually set a date we're like okay we're gonna try mm. to have sex later on today perfect. at right. eight o'clock we're it. gonna right. try whatever you know but it never works out i think it's because we don't we talked about this on the show we had one night this summer where our son was invited to a sleepover one night it was gonna be our big night <laughs> we got into a fight the day of the day of then we got i got home from work we were fighting more we ended up like we're like the house is empty let's scream at each other we screamed at each yep. other uh -huh. so then we went out for chinese food got the scorpion bowl got wasted and then we were trying to have sex and i was Fuck like before food Hands down. I, I, before I agree. Don't eat I'm first. On that. See? <laughs> Thank you. I've been saying that for years. Amen to that. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. Look You're striving that. for perfection. Like you you are waiting for the perfect scenario. And mm -hmm. especially where you guys still have kids at home. And even if people have grown children, like people they're calling, like, how do you how long do you cook the chicken in the microwave? You know, yeah. like or do the pop over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that is the biggest struggle is one. Here's a myth buster. Everyone has sex when they're tired. Like, mm -hmm. you're never not going to be tired. Like, right. that's just we're in the realm of life right now. Yes. And two, you cannot wait for perfection. Like, it is never going to be perfect. Someone's teeth aren't going to be brushed. Someone's going to be tired. Someone's going to, you know, have other things on their mind. Preach. But the key mm -hmm. is to open the lines of communication. I know you guys, I listened to your faking orgasm episode on the way here and I was like, yes, yes. I mean, the guy next to me at the red light was like, what the hell are you talking about? Um, because if you're not talking about these things or what your needs are, like when you said we tried to schedule sex, to be honest, that's one of the first assignments I give a couple. Mm -hmm. Is it like Tuesday at six o'clock? Yes. Yep. yes. Because, because but when do you talk about it? So let me ask you, when you scheduled this, okay, you know, our son's going on a sleepover. We're going to do it this night. Like, when we were strategic, we even told our 20 year old, like, don't come home. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stay at your boyfriend's, whatever. Because we were like, oh my God, we're going to have a date night. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. going to be so fun and great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't know it was like too overwhelming for us. We had the fight. We went out to eat. <laughs> we drank too much. We're trying to have sex. I'm falling all over the place trying to have sex with them. We woke up the next day. We both looked at each other like, wow, we really fumbled that date. Night. Uh, like, a, that was uh, it. That was it. Uh, well, now, we didn't both wake up like that. I woke up fine. I remember everything she did. She had more sips of that scorpion bowl than me. Is that like that? <laughs> you know, so like, we're going of, away this weekend. Head, head so we're going to have one night. Yeah. Okay. And we don't know it. We don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> but, but see, I don't have high hope. Here's the struggle. Yeah, yeah. Here's the here's the here's the struggle is, and I'll be honest. When I first started coaching, mm -hmm. I was very anti scheduling sex. I was mm -hmm. like, "What? That takes all the fun out of it." Like, yes. who? What? It does. But, but is our frame of mind here? Mm -hmm. So now, especially in the couples that I work with, who are just like you explained, we got this and this and then we're tired. And blah, 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 right. Is for, and I don't love the word foreplay, but for lack of a better term, foreplay starts the minute sex ends. Mm -hmm. And so if you just had a little rendezvous, mm -hmm. the next time, now you're foreplaying with each other. Keep like, going. what and, are and you, you don't doing? actually finish out or? No, no, you no, finish. She's saying, she's oh. saying but afterwards. like you wake up the next day, right. right? And that's when foreplay starts. So yeah. I asked you, when did you start talking about your sex thing? And you gave me what you did that day. So you didn't say, you know, oh, well, then we started sexting each other or we started sending each other, you know, cute little like tongue pics or I mean, a booty pic up. or, I mean, you know, I need a nipple shot. You know, like we left a note in your lunchbox, <laughs> you know, like or, yes. you know, sending a, a, you know, sometimes people will 
like I love Halloween. Mm -hmm. Like go to the Halloween store and pick up some costumes. Yes. Even like uh, when it's like, you know, November 1st when they're like half off or whatever. Like who's who's charge of planning? Who's charge of initiating in that realm? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't talk about it, then you're just leaving it up to and you're like, well, he I initiated last time. Yeah. Or like, I think he should initiate. I think she should initiate. Well, then you get to the day. No one talked about how much we're going to drink. Mm -hmm. No one talked about what. And not to say that you have to like plan everything minutely. Right. But how exciting to like have that build up. Oh, six hours until we're naked. You know, oh, and then okay. yeah. or you start reading erotica to each other. Like maybe send him a voice memo of like a little snippet from a, an erotic three, book. I, li I, li I, I, I like movies. I like that. What? Like that. Yeah, you know, back in my younger college days, you know, I was a different type of individual. And stuff like that. So I'm very comfortable. Here's a three porn movie. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Well, here's back the thing. Here's my... <laughs> and he was able to function under like cameras and lighting and girls and whatever was going on with people watching. Yeah, but I'm sure there was some like, what do they call them? Like fluffers or something? No, no, uh, no, 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 no fluffers. No. Nah, we made it do what it do. I was young. It was my college days. You know, I was a different individual back. I was different. But it individual is back different. There. It is yes. so different when you're when we're older. Yes. And have children. We've been together 22 years. Yes. You know, and there's like nothing new. Like I get dressed nothing in front new. of them. Uh -huh. So I put my, you know, my granny panties on in front of them and stuff. Yeah. Speaking like, of that, since you brought that up, granny panties, what's your take on lingerie? What's your take on kids <laughs> Lingerie? <laughs> lingerie. <laughs> I'm assuming lingerie. Well, number one. Well, we call it lingerie. Lingerie. <laughs> I think, especially being in a long-term relationship, mm -hmm. that you have to continuously find ways mm. to keep it spicy. Boom. Yeah. And so, I lingerie all the time. whether I, it's lingerie, it's in, the it's in the bottom drawer. I ain't seen it in but years. But who, like, <laughs> I, so I asked Jenny, like, who's it for though? I wore it on your birthday in May. Oh, you did? Yeah, remember when oh, you were see? hitting so... it from the yeah. back with that robot <laughs> holding your drink while I'm sitting here, like, I can't believe I'm doing this right now with this guy. I'm yeah. like bending yeah. over yeah. this guy because yes, it's right. birthday. Yeah, you're remember absolutely... that? We talked yeah. like three times. Yeah, you're, absolutely, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. That, yes, yes. Who bought the lingerie? I she I have Yes, yeah, we went away. That was. Goodbye. She brings it in a brown paper bag. It's yeah. very, it's just yeah, you're absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. That I was a lingerie girl. That I was love a it. Yeah. yeah, that was a lingerie moment. I remember. Yes. Lingerie. Yeah, yes, I love it. <laughs> I but does laundry turn you on? Yeah, he yeah, loves it. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of chaos, some high heels. You might want to see a high heel, you know, left to right. You know what I'm saying? When does laundry like, turn you on? Like when you're wearing it? Oh, yeah. I'm like, I look nice in it. Yeah. Okay. But I will say, though, for him, like, okay, so. Then let's flip the script a little. Flip it. Because he's got atrocious underwear. It's atrocious. <laughs> it's like Hanes, but it's like the boxers. Hanes is a great brand. And they're like, <laughs> but it's not like the boxer briefs. They're boxers. And okay. they hang off him. And he has no ass. So not then his tall. underwear, his underwear hangs off his butt. He looks disgusting. So mm. he wants me to hey, like. You really put a little tongue on that. It looks disgusting. She is Did very passionate no, about this underwear. I have not said one thing that was not. You are a beautiful person, but over here is he's disgusting. <laughs> right then. <laughs> Because I'm really how am I supposed to be? I'm supposed to be dressed, right? I'm supposed to have all this lingerie on and look extra sexy. Uh -huh. But he can't. He looks gross. Mm. It looks disgusting. And I tell him all the time, I said, "You're freaking the underwear. Down low. I'm gonna burn all your underwear. I burn all your underwear. <laughs> so why not you look a little bit? You know, like try to make yourself look a little better. Okay, let's do it together. Like you know, you have all these uh, um uh, things that you want from me, and I'm supposed to look. And I'm amazing. I'm beautiful. I love myself. Absolutely. Right? But you, Vic, okay. you don't really like work out. Like we've talked about these things too. Those are the things that I would like from you. It, just because I want you to exude health. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Vic likes to eat. He likes to eat a lot of grits. I we only talked about eat that. by myself. You eat? By myself. Right. And you also. Jen is very healthy. And everything that she Stop eats. Stop it! I'm trying. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> the point is, you fall like it, if you're together for a long time, you mm -hmm. fall into this pattern, mm -hmm. and we're in it. We've been in it for a while, and it saddens me. It makes me sad, but at the same time, he's my best friend. I love mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I would I like to be like you know more with us connecting better. That helps me connect. Mm -hmm. Sex to me is like yeah, it's cool, it's erotic, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like it's I like it, but. I like that aspect. I like the actual connecting part, knowing mm -hmm. that we shared that together. So this is what you're talking about. There's two types of people in the world, and sometimes they marry each other, mm -hmm. um, who need, um, so someone needs emotional connection to connect sexually. So right. I need to be like emotionally connected to you. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who are like, no, I need to be sexually connected in order to feel that emotion. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And 
sometimes like there's a disconnect. So like I'll have couples that, and typically the male partner, if they're a heterosexual couple are the, well, I need to have sex with you in order to feel emotionally connected to you. Like that's how I feel emotion. Mm -hmm. And then typically you have the female partner who's like, well, no, like I need to be emotionally connected. We can't, you know, that's where like sometimes like the fight sex, people are like, oh, fight sex is awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, for emotionally connected person, sometimes it's not because you're still reveling on right. like the fight you just had you're like mm -hmm. i fucking hate you right now right um and so then they're trying to like meet in the middle here mm -hmm. and and so you have to do both in some ways and so moving past <laughs> the underwear <laughs> they pass it up the underwear. Well, sometimes, the underwear. Hey, well, sometimes I, you know, I just get out the shower because I lo always love the shower before before sex. You know, I'm into oh, that. Thing he has to yeah. plan the shower. I'm into I'm into He's showering. Like, Let's take a shower every single time. I'm like, and I what's wrong with that? We got to clean our bodies. We're going in all different type of crevices. Well, why do we have to clean our bodies? And every, and every... We don't. We don't have to clean our bodies. Why not? <laughs> That's nasty. The, you know what I'm saying? Huh? You have to get all crap. You got to get. You had sex with me back in the day in yes, a club bathroom. Yes, but we in was young. I was. I was. With no and, and thank God. And, and thank God I survived. And stuff, you understand what I'm saying or whatever stuff like that. Sex but as I, the Denny's parking lot. Yeah, yes, we did. Denny's we did. We did do a lot of parking lot uh, stuff. Not, not in the yes, car. In the French fries. Yes. Not I'm, in the car, Jen. Yeah. Oh, outside the car. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was willing to take greater risks back then and stuff with my health and cleanliness and stuff like that. But, you know, at this See? age and this time, I feel like well, I have to be clean before we get into it. I, you know, I need a little soap and a little dove and, and all that. Let's make okay, sure Okay, so that's apart. for you. So you need that. Right. Do you need her to be Hell the same yeah. way? I don't want to be smelling no funky, you know. I <laughs> vagina no, smell. No, it's not Vulva that. smell. It's not that. Penis it's not, it's smell. Not, she's a very clean person. I am. Yeah, very, very clean, clean person. person. <laughs> but clean people, we're running around, like, doing this, going to work, going to the store, going here, going to the club, going there, blah, blah, blah. Then you're going to come home with all that outside funk and then just try to get in the bed and talk about doing it and doing it and doing it, it well. But it takes... No, you have to take a shower. Because it takes the spontaneity out of it. You it can does. have spontaneity in the shower. I wash her back in the shower. <laughs> I give her massage in the shower. Like, I, okay, I make, I'm I make, getting out. I'm I make, no, me. that's okay, not how. I'll be right there. That, okay. That's not how. I'm that's not. Like, you fun right now. That's not happening. I make it. I make. I make it a very, very, very sensual and you know what I'm saying situation. I have so much I want to say. All right. Anyway, Jen, go ahead. <laughs> Don't front. Yeah. <laughs> I go ahead. Well, here's the important thing: you're talking to each other about it. Yes. Like that. Yeah. Like communicate. that's that's yes. the most. Yes, important that's thing. so important. Yes. It's so important. And there's going to be some things that we need to just accept in some ways. Like you know, and maybe this is one of those things. Maybe it's not. Maybe you know, you have to get to a point where. Okay, Vic needs me to take a shower. Okay, I'll fucking take a shower. Like, yes. if that's going to move. But I encourage you to think about, like, what... And it's funny, because in one of your episodes, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you're like, it's the same thing all the time. Oh, my God. Same routine. Except mm -hmm. for yeah. his birthday, where he hit it from the back like it was Hugh Hefner. <laughs> with the robe open. Okay? <laughs> that was like, he changed up on that one. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a very unselfish lover. Am I not? You're very unselfish, yes. But it's yes. always same routine. Same routine. And so if you get into the same pattern, there's no, you know, there's there's a responsive sex drive and a spontaneous sex drive. And mm -hmm. so if you're a responsive sex drive person, you need like your arousal comes before desire. Mm -hmm. And so you need to kind of start to get into it mm -hmm. before you're going to feel a desire to have sex. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you have the spontaneous person who's like just kind of thinks of it, you know, or see something on TV or hear something. That's like me. That. I'm spontaneous. You know, and they just like want that. Mm -hmm. spontaneity but knowing what your sex drive is will help you communicate better to with each other i like that because i want to be thrown up against a wall listen i have a very 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 high sex drive that i've had since i was younger i used to watch a lot of porn when i was a kid you know <laughs> and it built from there and stuff like that so i, I have no issues and whatever i've down there and stuff at all either and stuff no you know said that. no 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 i'm saying no do. no meaning saying that yes i know spontaneity i'm i've been spontaneous many 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 times and stuff you know and i also like to be prepared and plan things i like <laughs> taking showers i like doing it all like she said i've been around we've been in denny's parking lots with that's been spontaneous we've been so many many places but at this point in my life you know I like some cleanliness on top of everything else, you know? So that's it. You can plan spontaneity, believe it or not. Yes. 
like you can pl- so ha- I encourage people to have their like schedule scheduled sex date. Okay. Mm-hmm. Start the foreplay as soon as the last sex time ended. Right. And whatever turns you on. Like, and this is the conversation of like, right. you know, and and keep in mind, turn ons are not just like sexy texts or a boob pick or whatever. Right. They're like, you know, take out the fucking garbage. Like, yes. or do the dishes when you walk by the sink. Like some of those things will irritate. That's what attracts me to him. Right. Is mm-hmm. the amount of stuff that he does, especially for our children. Like mm-hmm. that's important to me. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. know for him, it's mostly just that I'm hot. And I get it. I'm like a pretty boy centerfold over here. I get it. I understand. But for on the other side, it's me being attracted to him for everything he does every single day for me because he's a lovely person. He's an yes. amazing person to me. Yeah. Yes. He's got me back all the time. So, Absolutely. yes. But do I want to hump his face? Yes. I do. <laughs> um, no, but yes, I do want it to get to where we're back in that. And uh, I know couples go through it. Mm-hmm. You know, they just go through these things. And it's I don't feel like there's anything for us to really worry about because like you said, we're communicating. Yes. And that's not one, one thing I ever want to have with him is us shutting down. Yes. Like I want us to have these conversations, right? Yeah. Do you find that most couples do talk to each other or they do no, not? they do not. Okay. And I think, w- so they they come into talking with me about, you know, we're, we we do not have a sex drive. We have low mm-hmm. libido. She wants to, I don't want to vice versa. What do we do about it? But most of the time, a lack of sex or intimacy is a symptom of something else. Mm-hmm. So if you're not talking about other things in your relationship, and this is where like, I felt like my husband and I, like we just, and I'm an over communicator and he's not. So mm-hmm. we practice, but like, yeah, we just talk about everything. Mm-hmm. Like, and so That means it makes it more comfortable for us to talk about the sexual things, too. We're not comfortable talking about I'm angry that, you know, I'm carrying all the mental load and I have to do all the things for the children. Then you're not going to talk about like, hey, that position doesn't really work for me. Or, you know, sometimes I don't want to take a shower beforehand. Like, can we change the script? We change the script, Rick. You know, know, like (laughs) and it doesn't always have to be like penis and vagina or end with an orgasm either. You know, what are you supposed to end with? Laughs, because that's what's going on in my house. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now we've had. Well, you have to think no. about is like yes. if orga is orgasm the goal? Like right. I mean, for most people, yes. But what is the actual goal? Right. Is to feel, especially for women, to Intimate. feel pleasure yeah. and connection with your partner. Right. Mm-hmm. So it you know there could be a time where you maybe mutually masturbate. Yes. With each We've other, next that. to each We've other. Yeah, right? we're, we're with that. Because um, you get tired. Yeah. you get tired. So after the first time, we're like, okay, we're not going to do it again. Yes. We hold hands. We make our You almost there? Yes. <laughs> Look into my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that is so incredible. I mean, you guys are so far beyond the time. I mean, there's couples who literally are like, the script is always the same. Yes. And yes. like, you know, okay, you come in, we take a shower. Okay, we get out of the shower. Then we get undressed, and then you get on top of me, and then I pleasure you, you pleasure me, and right. then we I lay there until I orgasm, but then I fake it, and then it, uh, like it, yes, that's where and we're and it's only a problem if it's a problem for you. Got it. You okay. know, like I think there's like this like mentality of like wanting to be normal. Okay, and we're it's only a problem until it's a problem for you. So like okay. the the what you're doing, how often you're doing it, if that feels good to the two of you or to anyone, right. then that's a then do it. Okay. Like I'm not here to tell you how the perfect way to have a sex life. Mm. The perfect way to have a sex life is whatever feels good and perfect for you. Gotcha. Not for another person. So are you yeah. finding that a lot of people are using sex toys? Because I feel like people love sex toys. Yes. You know, it's there's no statistic there in my uh-huh. experience with my clients. Like I I recommend them in some ways if people are looking for a variety right. or but a lot of it, all of it is like a mental game. Right. Yes. You know, like some, you know, getting, you know, the male partner sometimes, again, if we're talking about heterosexuals, to realize mm-hmm. that, you know, 75% of women need clitoral stimulation to have an orgasm. Right. Gotcha. That's me. So like just pumping it and that's pumping it and pumping it. it. I talked about right. that in the last, last episode. I was over there faking it for years. Like I didn't re- I, I thought you were supposed to just have that. And yeah. for me, that doesn't work for me all yeah. the time. It just doesn't. Sometimes yeah. it does. Yeah. I'm really like, a, you know what I really like to do, Jen? I like to dry hump. I'm like dry oh, okay. I really like dry humping. Dry I like that, especially if like, like if he has some jeans on, I'll be dry humping. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. And, and that 
then do more of that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah, 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 you know, yeah, so yeah. if you're gonna drive up on this episode, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta leave. Go here, girl. <laughs> I'm not a hands on coach, I'm not an observing coach, I'm not a just gonna be in the back, like Jen. I need you to lift your left leg up, a little bit. <laughs> Vic, move your right foot yeah. over there. Okay, good, go. See, <laughs> see, here's, here's a great example, let me give it to you. So, dry humping, like, so if you have a moment, right, oh. where Maybe he, you know, he's sitting on the couch. It's the middle of the afternoon. No one's home, and right. and you just get this sting of like, I feel like a little bit horny right now. Mm -hmm. Go do it. Go dry. But then that's, <laughs> yeah. but that Go here, just but then, like this. <laughs> <laughs> but then it, but it could again. Right. Uh, this is all in like it could not should. We're right. talking about could here. Uh -huh. Then that is now like the the preview the trailer mm. to what could happen mm. when you schedule it two days from now or later tonight mm. or i just need a quick little orgasm boom you know like it, it, you know like there, again there's no like i can't give someone a script right. to say like this is how you have a great sex life so i also hear a females they'll a lot of times they'll complain that their men are in the bathroom a really long time and, you know, of course, we all want to believe that those men are pooping. We want to. We want to poop. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of women are saying, like, they think that their men are jerking off, like, in the shower. You know? And and I know Vic is a shower jerker off. No, no. No, actually, I'm not. See, you're lying. And so, like, I'm not a shower jerker off of. Why? Because, first of all, it's too strenuous. And so, I'm in the shower. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta, yeah, 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 you gotta that's get comfortable. That's right. Yeah, you said yeah, in every yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta get comfortable. He lay down. He does a yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You gotta tongue. get. Yeah, yeah. Candles all around. Yeah, him. you know what I'm saying. And <laughs> if you in the shower, you up against. You like, oh god, you are trying to get his back. And the next, if you catch My legs leg, are tired. Yeah, you got the leg cramp that's in the middle. You, it's a wrap. That's easy. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, but you know, people sometimes get mad at each other if they're doing that. But that's an okay thing, right? Yeah. And I think if honing in on why are you mad? Right. Like, are you, and most of the time, I'm going mm -hmm. to assume that the partner is mad because you're not getting what you need in your sexual relationship. Okay. And so now that becomes a threat. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. And so, you know, I've said to my husband before, you know, like, because my husband works a lot of overtime. Mm hmm. And he doesn't listen. I mean, he'll probably never listen to us. But he... Um, oh, he's definitely listening. He's going to listen to us. We're going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, you know, like I've said to him, like, oh, my vibe is great. But, you know, mm -hmm. can we get it on tonight or something? Right. You know, because we, each other, I think the importance of masturbating is we have to learn what makes us feel good. Mm. Right. And so if you're not learning about your own body, both male and female, if yeah. you're not learning about your body, about like what turns you on, what feels good, what makes you reach orgasm, what just like you don't want to reach or like withholding orgasm is an incredible, pleasurable thing to experience mm -hmm. with yourself or with a partner. And when it gets back to the vibrator, you know, mm. some men are intimidated yes. about using a vibrator or, or a woman using a vibrator alone I encourage or you. with a partner. <laughs> but it's a tool. It's another tool. Guess. But I encourage you. I don't use one. Yes. To show. And that's okay too. Yeah. Like, you know, it doesn't. I think the reason why I got, because I, when I was younger, like, you know, I would go to these sex toy parties. I would buy them. Yeah. I would buy them. And, and I would like use it here and there, but. The rabbit. Yes, I had the rabbit. Yes. <laughs> He's like, the rabbit. The I rabbit. The rabbit Good job, well, the rabbit does everything. It's so. like, it comes up with one name. The rabbit. The rabbit. The rabbit. I remember. I mean, is that even ex in existence still, the rabbit? Yeah. I mean, they look a little different. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's advanced, there's advanced new levels of it now. Okay. But go ahead. So for me, so, but because of what we talked about in the last episode where I have a problem with intercourse and mm -hmm. always having that orgasm. I stopped using anything that would stimulate my clitoris. Okay. Because I felt like I needed to have that just, I needed to leave it alone unless it was me, you know, with just organically, just yeah. with, my, with my own finger, because I felt like I was scared because I felt like vibrators, that's not a realistic orgasm for me. Okay. And I am never going, I'm never going to reach that orgasm in my life by having sex with this guy. Mm. Sorry, Vic. <laughs> mm. Is that okay? <laughs> no, by 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 but but anybody, with anybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had partners in the past. So then that's okay. And mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I live with not, but he's always like, oh, you don't want to go to body. Like, and I'm like, I'm okay, <laughs> yeah. because I just I'm afraid because I have this idea. 
vibrators are amazing. I love them. They're so great. <laughs> yes. They're God's gift. No, Testify. No, that should amazing. be a t-shirt. Vibrators are, they're, vibrators no, are they're amazing. amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> but I, me, myself, I'm not going to reach that. I'm yeah. never going to reach it. So I would rather kind of just leave my vagina alone mm -hmm. so that when we're actually doing what we need to do, I can get to where I need to be. So you don't want to use a vibrator because you're going to compare the orgasm. Right. And I feel like it overstimulates me. Okay. Because at one point, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of an addict. <laughs> she was an addict. Yeah. I don't wean myself <laughs> off it. <Yeah. laughs> I was like, I'm down to four times a day. Okay, No, no but now I haven't used, rabbit had I haven't used one in years. I haven't used one in years. Yeah. Beca because of that. Just only because of that. And here's the thing. Like, that's okay. Yeah. Like, I felt like, um, and maybe because we're just talking, but like some women or people in general, like, feel the need to explain, you mm -hmm. know, like. It's okay. Like whatever fits your lifestyle and also recognizing too, like there's so many different ways you can use a vibrator. Right. Like you could use the vibrator underneath the scrotum. Mm -hmm. oh. You could use it on his nipples. <laughs> you could use it on your nipples. <laughs> she does you know? squeeze my nipples. I just she's squeeze. Like, she's, I like, she's a nipple squeezer. Yeah. She's a nipple biter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always have to be like, nipples. <laughs> people think like this has to be used a specific way, yeah. you know, like, but there's other, you know, again, it's a tool. It's a toolbox. Right. You right. know, like, and it's just one of many tools hopefully you have at any certain time. Like, okay. you know, bring out the vibrator sometime, but don't use it on the clitoris. Like, Use okay. it like your your clitor. Oh, you got Break a tool. It down. She got a tool. Break out a tool. What is that? that? Oh, this is a clitoris. Okay. Oh, oh <laughs> that's that is the clitoris. I was like, that's kind of <laughs> so people focus on this piece. Like okay. this is the piece that sticks like out of your vulva. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are the legs. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the lips. Like, this is in. No, these are not the lips. These are inside, almost like the lips are on the outside here. Okay. And so if you take the vibrator. Break it out. Oh, oh. shit. Oh. So these are the lips. Oh, okay. So if you take the vibrator, this is a vulva. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so this is a vaginal hood. Yeah. This is your labia right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the clitoris, this little bum right here. Mm. So if you take the vibrator mm -hmm. and rub right here, what it's doing is this sits behind here like this. Okay. So then you are stimulating the inside okay. of the clitoris. So oftentimes when people have an internal orgasm, mm. they're actually stimulating. And these, you know, is the the bulbs of the clitoris, which if you're a male, will turn into the balls of the scrotum. Like okay. we're, we're all the same parts, just made up differently. Mm. Um, that there's other, so you, people focus on the head because that's the right. tick to, you know, the quick and dirty orgasm. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But another way is just to rub the labia because then you're rubbing the other part of the clitoris. Okay, yeah. It's just another way, you know, like and we as women, we we know all of that. We figure that out. Correct. It's just it's about being Well, we being, hope. We, yeah, we, And if you didn't, you did right now. It's about <laughs> right, but it's about feeling comfortable enough with yourself yes. to, to figure all of that out and yeah. what works for you. And showing your partner. Like right. sometimes it really takes like actual showing your partner yeah. and saying, right. you know, some conversations I tell people like, you know, there's there's a certain tact to it. You can't be like um, stop doing that. That really is bothering me. You can, and right. you should, if you know. Like, like, get off me. You're crushing me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. I'm that. I'm like, you're killing me right now. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. But, That's you know, depending on your relationship, if you can right. have those conversations in the moment, great, because <laughs> yeah. you can change the script right, right. there. Yeah. But yeah. also, like, you know, hey, you know, last night it really felt good when right. you did this. Or, right. like, can I show you what mm. really turns me on? Like, I okay. give Right. My clients like a six minute gotcha. something's weird. Yeah. I give my clients a six minute activity where for right. three minutes they mm -hmm. show their partner mm -hmm. what makes them feel good. Because gotcha. you're never gonna know unless you tell them or show them. What is your take on tantric sex? Oh my god, I knew you were gonna ask that. That's <laughs> yeah. so weird. I mean, yeah. 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 That whole philosophy. So I don't know a a lot about it because I'm not a tantric coach. Okay. But there is a lot about breath work. Mm -hmm. and tantric yeah. and sensual touch and that's what i want to get into um, i want to get into stuff like that i want to like him to do more yoga with me as workout i feel like those are the things that would turn me on yes. about you know as being physical with each other is sweating it out in a hot yoga class yeah. i love it there so but you know i mean everything's a step i guess yeah, i but. think what's really great about tantric sex or having some sort of practice mm -hmm. in your sexual routine mm -hmm. is it really helps with the mental load Yes. And I hear that a lot. Like a lot of, especially women or moms will mm. be like, I just can't turn my brain off. Like we're laying there and I'm trying to get into it, but I'm thinking about, oh crap, 
I need to rerun the washer because it was now they stink because I didn't turn on the dryer yesterday. Right. Yeah. Like, why are we thinking about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and just yeah. that's but I think that that piece can really help. Right. But again, if you don't have a regular practice mm -hmm. in okay. general, it's right. very hard to flip the switch. Flip, 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 flip. Well, I'm going to yeah. answer your question and maybe I'm wrong because I'm not a sex coach. But the reason why women think of that is because we never think we're doing enough. Oh, yeah, 100%. and we always feel bad about everything, including when we're trying to do something for ourselves, like get our rocks off. Mm. A hundred percent. The yeah. mental load for women and moms specifically is the number one, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, that kills a woman's sex drive. I can agree with that. It's like, I mean, I mean, it's everything. Stress, to-do list, like the mental load that we have to carry. Yeah. And I think sometimes our male counterparts, if we have one, a male counterpart, um, even the, you know, because I'll hear the men say like, well, she just needs to tell me what to do and I'll help. But the thought that I have to think of what I need you to do, yeah, that you know, like to you, <laughs> mm -hmm. like that, that just adds to my mental yes. load, yeah. you know, and, and a lot of it is internal too. like some women will say like, oh, they don't have to, a lot of it is just recognizing in every self, like I need to go to yoga yes. or I need to take time for myself or I just need to accept the fact that I have mom guilt right. and just keep practicing letting it go. And women also, I will say to feel, because I have in the past, because I'm getting older and stuff, I'm on all fours. My boobs now almost touch the bed. And I, and so I would see that and I'd be like, okay. And then I had to start really realizing like who I am as a person. I was like, you know what? I, I'm in my forties and I've been through a lot and I've had five children mm -hmm. and I'm, and I feel like I'm an amazing being, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, but with women, we never feel like we're good enough. We're not mm -hmm. in the right position. We're not laying like this to be sexy and all of that. Yeah. So when once you start to, you know, do some of these practices like yoga or whatever it might be, that a lot of that comes with that, where you start to feel more secure with, with who you mm -hmm. are as a being. Yes. And that's really important during sex too, because we have high expectations that we're all supposed to look like this person or that yep. person and have no roles and all of that. And that is not real. Realistic. Yeah. And why are we letting our male counterparts, you know, not they they don't think like that. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. Most and I'm yes, like, they so don't. we're trying to be like all sexy and they're just like, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's I'm not all, see what that's, happens not, that's not all males that think like that. Just but, you, Vic. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been sexy since I was you know younger and stuff. I'm always sexy. I'm job that gorgeous. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I'm different. So anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm never had a problem. <laughs> you know, but now I, I understand exactly what you what you're saying. But most of the time it's self conflicted is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. It's like it's not, you know, hopefully again, oh it's God, not your partner, partner saying that to you. Right. Yeah. Then yeah. you don't need to be with <laughs> right. That exactly. Exactly. Like, you don't need to be with that partner. No. Right. Like, like, you know. But it's also expressing like yeah. knowing like what like how your partner can help you. Right. You know, like, so some partners are like, but I just love you. Like, yeah. you know, I just, you're, you're beautiful. Like, but if your love language isn't words of affirmation, right. then that's, you know, like, right. it's going to go in one. Like, I like your hanging boobs. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, you know, Jenny, but. I love Jenny's hanging boobs. I love, <laughs> I love it all and stuff like that. You are a beautiful person. We Got just got to, you know, get in on the lingerie situation and we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, sex coach uh, Jennifer Melville. We'll definitely have you come back yes, on please. Bad News for Life. So, and so thank fun. you so much yes. for being here for our monumental <laughs> episode 20. Yeah. Uh, yes. did it. Yes. Our first guest. Our you first guys guest. are doing really good work. And, I, and I'll say, I'm a little bit critical of some, you know, I guess like non-trained people like giving advice, but you guys just have kept it real. Your advice is very well spread out to each his own. And as someone who is trained in this, like I appreciate that perspective and the like, you know, not pointing like, we well, should do this, you should no, do that. No, 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 there's no. no because when it comes to relationships, no relationship is perfect. There's right. no happily yes. ever after. It's right. work every single day. Every We're just letting day. people know that we've been through the ringer. Yeah. And, you know, and just letting people know that your expectations of what your relationship should be yes. versus what it's going to be, is they're going to be a little different. Yeah. But at the same time, you just choose your path. Will you stay together? Will you not? Yeah. That's up to you. But we yeah. just want everybody to understand that this is reality. Yes. Yeah. And what you're seeing a lot of times on the social media and all of that, that's not re realistic. Yeah. It's lies, it's lies. Yeah. So, you know, when you're looking at that, you know, it can hurt your feelings to make you feel bad about your relationship. Yeah. And that's just kind of what we're trying to relay here. Yeah. And I love it. I'm here for it. You Absolutely. guys are awesome. Thank you. No, you're yeah. awesome. How do people get in touch with you? Yeah. So I would say uh, I always get kicked off Instagram, but I'm on Instagram with Relationships Thriving. Mm -hmm. um, but if you visit Jennifer-Melville.com. Okay. Jennifer.Melville. 
Melville dash. 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 I'm sorry, dash. Jennifer dash, dash Melville dot com. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's my website and all kinds of free goodies and stuff on there too. So. Love free Thank goodies. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys so much. It's bad marriage for life. Thanks for watching. <laughs>